How's it going ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is Jeff Benjamin. We are looking at the new MacBook Pro for 2018. Let's check it out. So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the 2018 MacBook Pro. This is the 15 inch version, but both the 15 and 13 inch versions with touch bar have been refreshed for 2018. The MacBook Pro without touch bar has not been refreshed. So if you want the latest and greatest, you're gonna to have to buy a MacBook Pro with the touch bar. Inside the box, you'll find an information packet, a USB-C power adapter, and a USB-C charging cable. So the information packet on the front says designed by Apple in California. Inside, you have some brief MacBook Pro documentation, basically giving you a brief overview of the device, along with some regulatory information, and of course, this right here, the Apple stickers. The power adapter comes with a USB-C port to connect your power cable. The 15-inch model comes with an 87-watt USB-C power adapter and a two meter USB-C cable. Now the 13 inch model comes with a 61 watt power adapter. All right, so here it is folks, the MacBook Pro in the 15 inch form factor. It's gonna take the wrapper off, slide that out of the way. And when you start up your MacBook Pro for the first time, you'll notice something new pretty much right off the bat. This. Hey, hey Siri support built right in. Hey, open the documents folder. We'll talk about this a little bit later, but it's super handy. Another first for the Mac is True Tone Display Support. You get that perfect white balance based on your ambient lighting conditions. Very handy for reading. And you get a new third generation keyboard that Apple says is noticeably quieter. So here is the previous generation keyboard. And here's the new keyboard. You hear the difference? It is a little subtle, but I definitely noticed the difference between the two. The keystrokes on the new MacBook Pro, which is right here, aren't as high pitched as they are on the old MacBook Pro. So here is old, new, old, new. Another benefit which Apple isn't advertising publicly is better protection against debris ingress which should make the 2018 MacBook Pro's keyboard more reliable than the previous generation models. And while I've never been a fan of the touch bar, if you want a 2018 MacBook Pro, you're going to get one because they all come equipped with the touch bar. Now the biggest differentiator between the previous generation MacBook Pro and the 2018 MacBook Pro are the processors. You get a new four core processor in the 13 inch model standard, and you get a new six core processor in the 15 inch model standard. In all, there are four different processors, two for the 13 inch model, two for the 15 inch model, and you can choose to upgrade if you desire to, but you can see the Geekbench benchmark speaks for itself. Now, I'm sure you've heard of the ongoing throttling controversy with the CPUs in the new MacBook Pro, but Apple did just release a fix and that fix noticeably improved Cinebench R15 CPU benchmarks for both 13 and 15 inch MacBook Pros. And now DDR4 memory is standard on the larger MacBook Pro and that means you can configure for the very first time up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, great for productivity applications, great for multitasking. And I'm not just talking about multitasking with like a calculator app and uh, word processing app, but I'm talking about multitasking with multiple Pro apps at once, like running Final Cut Pro and Logic and DaVinci Resolve all at the same time. That makes it so much easier to do when you have enough RAM. Graphics play a big role with the 2018 MacBook Pro in a number of ways. The first thing I notice is that the Intel Iris Plus graphics 655 on the 13 inch MacBook Pro are actually pretty decent uh, compared to the 15 inch with the discrete AMD GPU. Now, obviously the discrete GPU is gonna perform better, but the Intel Iris graphics are no slouch. And this is emphasized when you look at the Heaven benchmark. Now, let me just preface this by saying that the MacBook Pro is not a gaming machine by any stretch of the imagination. But as you can see, the Intel Iris graphics in the 13 inch model compare favorably to the graphics in the 15 inch MacBook Pro when running at each machine's default resolution. So keep that in mind. And we also ran a Cinebench benchmark for the GPU. 
And you can notice that that Radeon Pro 560X in my upgraded MacBook Pro 15 inch model compares very well to the iMac Pro's discrete GPU, that Radeon Vega 56. And then Final Cut Pro 10 export, you can see that the 15 inch model actually performed better than my base iMac Pro eight core machine. But if you're a gamer or you're working with other applications that will take advantage of an external GPU, you'll wanna invest in one of these because it's definitely gonna boost your productivity, especially with that 13 inch MacBook Pro that lacks a discrete GPU. True Tone is a technology that initially debuted on the iPad Pro, then it came to the iPhone and now finally it is here on the Mac. True Tone sets the correct white point for your display based on your surrounding environment and the lighting in that surrounding environment. So the screen will change based on where you are and what the lighting is like in your location. So watch the background of the Safari browser. When I disable True Tone, you can see it turns a little bluish. And then when I re-enable True Tone, those sensors pick up the ambient lighting of the room I'm currently in and will adjust the display accordingly. The T2 chip from Apple first debuted in the iMac Pro and now it comes to the MacBook Pro and it consolidates many of the controllers like the audio and storage controller. Plus it helps out with encryption and secure boot. Hey, open 9to5mac.com. But this is what's most impressive, at least from a user facing perspective. Hey Siri support for the first time on the Mac. Hey, open my downloads folder. I didn't think I would really care, but Hey Siri has tons of potential on the Mac because it is modal. So you can use your apps and interface with Siri at the same time. This has the potential of being a very powerful multitasking tool. For the very first time, there is a four terabyte SSD storage option. This only applies to the 15 inch MacBook Pro, but as you can see, Configuring your MacBook Pro with four terabytes of SSD storage is going to cost you a lot of money. And I'm not joking. So unless you are just swimming in dough or you sign a new NBA contract, my advice to you is just to opt for, you know, a modest amount of storage, maybe 256, even up to one terabyte, and then just get something like this, an external SSD to supplement your needs because the built-in storage is just, just crazy expensive and you're not gonna get your return on investment for something like that. Now, there's some things I don't like. Number one, there is no SD card slot still, which is super disappointing, but I wasn't really expecting it realistically, but still, that would be so useful. And then the touch bar. I've just never been a fan, but obviously Apple believes in the touch bar and hey, maybe it's time for me to really try to hunker down and give this thing another shot. What do you say? And the MacBook Pro's bezels, when compared to modern PC competition, are starting to look a little dated. And that's especially true, I think, for the 13 inch model, just because it's small already. Uh, the 15 inch, because the screen's so large, kind of helps to make up for that thick bezel. However, I still think Apple needs a new redesign for its MacBook Pro. I know they're only a few generations into this go round, so, Hopefully the redesign will come within the next few generations and we can get some thinner bezels and a more modern looking machine. It still looks good, don't get me wrong, but it is starting to look a little long in the tooth when compared to modern PC design. So ladies and gentlemen, that has been my hands-on look with the 2018 MacBook Pro 13 and 15 inch models. What do you guys think? Is the 2018 MacBook Pro a worthy upgrade? Sound off down below in the comments with your thoughts and opinions and leave me a thumbs up if you appreciated this video. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.